Hey guys, it's Mrs. Olenichek, and I'm going to go over the osmosis in a red onion cell uh, lab that we did. Um, so you'll remember we've seen the red onion before. It's nice because you can see the cell wall here, the white portion, and then the pink represents the cytoplasm inside of the cell. Um, so the interface between that white part and the pink part is actually going to be where the cell membrane is. Um, so this is your normal plant cell here. Um, generally plant cells like to be in a hypotonic environment, so there's more water outside than inside because they have those cell walls that keep them from bursting. Um, and this is a picture of um, some red onion cells that have undergone plasmolysis. So these are cells in um, a salt water solution. So because there's a higher salt concentration outside of the cell, which means there's low water outside of the cell, the water inside is going to diffuse out. Um, we watched this little video the other day, and so this will kind of show you plasmolysis in the red onion cell. So here you see the isotonic. and then your salt water solution, and you can see the cell's membranes pulling away from the cell wall because all of the water is flooding out, um, and so the cells are shrinking. Now here, let's see, they're going to flood with distilled water to try to bring it back to a hypotonic environment and you can see the cells starting to get larger as the high concentration of water outside moves into the cell. So you see those membranes are starting to move out. So water now is higher outside and so it's going to move into the cell. All right. So if you're going through and checking over the lab, make sure that for each of those situations you have your red onion cell clearly drawn. Make sure your magnification is indicated. So if you were looking at it under medium power, that would be 100x. If it was high power, that's 400x. Um, make sure that you've labeled the cell wall and the cell membrane and it should be colored. Um, and that goes for all three cell drawings. So you should have one drawing for your isotonic environment, that was the initial, one for the hypertonic environment, that was your salt water solution, and one for the hypotonic environment, which was the distilled water at the end. Um, so here, you should also make sure that there's a description. So what did it look like, what happened? associated with each of those drawings. So describe what happens to the water content of the red onion cells when they're placed in a salt solution and why this happened. Well, the water moved out of the cell because the outside environment contained less water, more, that should say more salt, <laughs> than inside, and water flows naturally from high to low concentrations. In the winter, icy roads are often salted to remove ice and make them less slippery. Um, grasses and other herbaceous plants often die near the side of these roads. What causes this to happen? Well, the same thing happens to those plants that happen to your red onion cells. The salt is actually going to cause those plants to lose water, and if they lose too much water, they die. Um, so when you go into the hospital, or when a person goes into the hospital, they're given fluid intravenously, an IV. Um, and this fluid contains a saline solution. Um, and this is going to be necessary because you need the solution to be isotonic to your body cells. If it was a higher salt concentration, low water, then your cells would lose, lose too much water. And if it was just pure water, they would gain too much water. So you want a solution that's isotonic to your body cells so you're not going to have huge fluctuations in water. Um, 
If, however, they did give you distilled water rather than saline solution by mistake, you would be in trouble. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is the water, there's going to be a higher concentration of water outside of the cell than inside, and so your, the water would diffuse into the cells and continue to do so. You, unlike the plant cells, do not have a cell wall, and so your cells would swell and eventually they would burst or lice. Now, there's organisms like paramecium that actually live in these freshwater environments. Um, and they have specialized structures called contractile vacuoles. Um, and these are kind of like little squirt guns. They collect and pump out excess water that begins to accumulate in the cell. Now these need that these organisms are going to need structures like that because there's going to be constantly water diffusing into their cells, particularly a single-celled organism. That's their only way of getting water or nutrients. Um, and so they live in a hypotonic environment and water's constantly diffusing into their cells. Um, if they didn't have a way of getting rid of that excess water, then they too would burst. Um, and so they have these little vacuoles, the contractile vacuoles that can pump out extra water. Um, these would have no use for an organism that lived in salt water because now you're dealing with the opposite problem. So if you live in salt water, then your inside has more water than your outside. And so instead of getting too much water coming in, you're more worried about too much water leaving. And so in a salt water or hypertonic environment, organisms are going to be losing water to the salty environment and not gaining too much water. So instead of have, needing some way to like spit out extra water, they need ways to conserve that water. So here's an interesting application. When you think about popcorn that gets sold at movie theaters, it's very salty. And this tends to make people become thirsty. And this is good if you own a movie theater because then they're gonna to wanna to buy those monster sodas and drinks. Um, but you can use what we learned here to explain why salty popcorn makes you thirsty. Um, and there's a great video here, and I'm gonna link this on the website, that explains this all to you really well. Um, and last but not least, explain why soft-bodied invertebrates like slugs die when you pour salt on them. So the salt is going to draw the water out of the slug, causing it to desiccate or dry out. Um, slugs have a partic are particularly susceptible to this because they have very permeable membranes. Um, and they absorb gases through their skin. And so they really do need to keep those membranes moist. Um, and so when you pour salt on them, you're drying them out. And it's not a good way to go, so don't do that. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye.